back with another video. So today we're going to be doing grade 12 geography, tropical cyclones, and as always, it's just going to be a short one where it's a brief summary and then we get into questions. So first things first that you need to know about a tropical cyclone is that it forms between 5 and 30 degrees, both north and south of the equator. The reason why it forms from 5 degrees and not from the equator is because one of the conditions of the formation of uh, um, tropical cyclones is that it needs a, a steep pressure gradient and it needs that from the Coriolis force. And between 0 and 5 degrees, the Coriolis force is like it doesn't exist. It's quite weak at the equator. Hence why it begins, they begin to develop from 5 to um 30 degrees north and south because it needs a Coriolis force present so that's one of the characteristics another one is that it forms at temperatures greater than 27 degrees another characteristic is that tropical cyclones um, occur from um, between rather late summer and early autumn and the reason why is that the ocean takes longer to eat to heat up water takes longer to heat up hence why it won't form early summer it's gonna form late summer to early winter i mean early autumn after you know the ocean has heated up to that um 27 degrees and more i'm gonna look at my notes just so that i don't forget what i <laughs> want to say okay and the weather so the weather that is associated with tropical cyclones heavy heavy thunderstorms like destruct like it's destructive it's hot um yeah but it lasts for a few days so that's the weather so it's it's quite destructive tropical cyclones have resulted in many deaths and disease outbreaks you know as you read on on further there will be a a, a a topic that deals specifically with the impacts of tropical cyclones they are quite severe but yeah, just one thing you need to know, you know, from the top of your head is cumulonimbus clouds, thunderstorms, strong winds, you know, those are, that's some of the, the weather that's associated with tropical cyclones. And then the names. So based on where in the world you are, it will have a different name. So for example, the Atlantic Ocean, which is your North America, in that area, they call them hurricanes. So probably may have may have not heard of Hurricane Katrina. It was a very destructive hurricane that happened. So you know that's another name for a tropical cyclone. Another one is in Australia. They call them woolly willies, or they call them um, typhoons. In your more Asian side, Asian side, <laughs> yeah, Asian side. So three different names for a tropical cyclone tropical cyclone, hurricane, typhoon. Those are the characteristics. And then another very interesting one, which you will always, 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 always get asked, is the name. So tropical cyclones are named according to the number of that um, cyclone that's occurring within that season. So if, if it's the fourth, for example, hurricane, it's gonna be, um, I mean, tropical cyclone, it's gonna be Tropical cyclone Denise because A B C D. So it's named according to the the alphabet and the number of like tropical cyclone that's occurring in that season. I'm struggling to explain my property, but I hope you get it. So yeah, if it's the third one, the name will start with a C, if that makes sense. If it's the second one, the name will start with a B. So yeah, just use that to help you figure out the number because they will definitely ask you that. I'm certain, almost certain. But yeah, that's a brief- Okay, so the first question is taken question. from the November 2014 Geography Paper 1, and we are going to be doing this question. So I've also added the figure, figure 1.1 from the annex here so that you can see basically what they are talking about. Okay, refer to figure 1.1, showing a graph of weather conditions in the mature stage of development of a tropical cyclone. State the type of precipitation at A. 
okay so firstly you're going to look at your diagram and you see that b is where the i is so where a is that tells you that that's the wall of the eye and from what you've studied you should know that the wall of the eye is where there's like heavy heavy precipitation like thunderstorms so how you'll answer that question is that there is heavy rainfall or thunder um, thunder showers like that's the type of precipitation because you know that at that area you know the eye, uh, the wall of the eye there will be heavy um rainfall so yeah that's how you answer the question next one state where the highest wind speed is recorded in the graph again that area that we just spoke about that is where the highest wind speed will be recorded um but you can also just see it from um the graph so that one was kind of given but had it not been a graph you would say that the highest wind speed occurs at the eye wall so that eye wall is is dangerous you know it's it's dangerous heavy wind speed i mean high wind speeds um heavy rainfall the works you know so yeah next question name the main cloud type that surrounds area b so the eye will always be surrounded by cumulonimbus clouds yeah next question give the term that describes air movement towards b so i there's 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 two way there's two answers it's either convergence or subsidence but i would best understand it as convergence and the reason why is because the rising air from both sides of the eye wall it, it, it's rising and as that air rises it converges you know so that's that's for me the easiest way but subsidence is also right so yeah you can answer it in that way if you don't understand feel free to ask me why and i can go more in depth but i would like to think i've explained but yeah sure you're more than welcome to i would love for you guys to understand why as opposed to just because i mean you can get the memo online but understand why because they can ask these questions in a number of ways okay give a reason for the air movement at b you see you need to know why this air is moving this way so as i said um the air is um what okay i'm trying to put this in 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 a way that you'll be easy be able to understand so um you know that a tropical cyclone is a low pressure system and in a low pressure system air rises you know and it moves from an area of high pressure to an area of low pressure so that movement that that rising of air where it moves towards a low pressure that causes the convergence so yeah that's how you'd answer that question okay next one in which area does the tropical cyclone experience the lowest pressure the eye the eye will always have the lowest pressure that is where the lowest pressure is found okay why does area descend in area b wait okay yeah why does air descend in area b because as the air rises it condenses and it, it cools down as well and cool air is heavy so it gets to a point where it's like too heavy and then that air um subsides yeah so that's literally the easiest answer that i could give to that now we are going to move on to the next question this is taken from the 2020 paper yeah 2020 november paper one refer to figure 2.3 which shows the path of a tropical cyclone give evidence that this tropical cyclone is in the southern hemisphere there is so much evidence that you can give so much firstly you would know that mozambique is like it's a neighboring country to south africa so therefore it would be found in the southern hemisphere one another reason is the date so as you know tropical cyclones occur late summer early autumn and in the southern hemisphere late 
summer slash early autumn falls within the date of april so april happens like april is early autumn so that tells you that this is in the southern hemisphere you know had it been in the northern hemisphere the dates would be different so there's a number of reasons that you could mention but those are for me the most obvious ones yeah so it's only out of one so don't even stress yourself about that question why is the mozambique channel usually ideal for the increase in temperature within the tropical cyclone so the reason for that is the fact that the the temp the sea temperatures there the, the the yeah the water temperature there is above 27 degrees which is what is needed for a tropical cyclone to occur another reason is the fact that at that area based on the latitude so you know that a tropical cyclone occurs between 5 and 30 degrees both north and south so mozambique the latitude the, the latitude of the mozambican channel allows you know for that coriolis force to um you know there's that strong coriolis force rather <laughs> which will then um okay let me just go back to the question uh yeah which will then be ideal for you know the increase of a temperature of the tropical cyclone so yeah there's various reasons um but you can just mention one again this question is out of two they only ask for one but for me those are the two most obvious reasons next question explain how the intensity of the tropical cyclone increased as it moved from area a to area B. you look at the diagram firstly at a there's no eye you know it was it was still a tropical storm so one one thing um reason that you can mention is that the eye has developed due to a decrease in pressure another thing that has changed from a to b is that the wind the wind speed has gone from like a gale wind to like hurricane like sort of speed wind so you know the wind speed increased and then another um another change that has happened from a to b is that there is now an increase in moisture so as the tropical cyclone ga gains more energy as the there's more heat there's an increase in moisture which will then form those cumulonimbus clouds and for, um result in those heavy um rainfalls and thunder showers so that's another reason um, okay, I've mentioned that there'll be an increase in rainstorms. Like, there's really a number of reasons that you can mention. But just looking at the graph and just also your knowledge of tropical cyclones, you could just mention, um, always just try and think, okay, weather. You know, how has the weather changed? Um, how has the wind speed changed? How has the air pressure changed? You know, if you mention those changes, which I've just mentioned, I then you've mentioned it you you've answered the question it is the only wanted yeah two um two changes so yeah okay next question discuss the conditions that could have caused the cyclone to weaken as it reached area c the biggest 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 reason is that area c is now on the land you know and the land causes friction so that friction decreases the wind speed you know it, it basically takes away the energy of the tropical cyclone and then another reason land is dry in comparison to water duh obviously <laughs> land is dry so there will be a decrease in moisture you know so yeah decrease in moisture friction which kills a tropical cyclone because the tropical cyclone needs moisture you know uh, yeah so you would mention that and then the next question evaluate the physical they even put in brackets natural negative impact of tropical cyclones along the coastline of mozambique can i please emphasize do not mention anything about people's houses do not mention anything about um uh what's this uh an increase in waterborne diseases people don't mention anything because they specifically said mention the physical uh negative 
impacts. So you would basically say that because of these, um, the increased wind speed and all of that, the coastline will be uh, reshaped because of water and wind erosion. Another thing, animals can be displaced. Um, animals and plants can be displaced because of these intense wind speeds, because of this increase in uh, precipitation and water and all these things. So those are the two reasons that I could think of. The memo has more, but um, I think, you know, if we can just think of the fact that the coastline will be reshaped because of the water and wind and animals, you know, you know, you, you're good. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I know it's a very short one. I didn't even go through the stages. I didn't go through the effects and all those things. But if you need more help, if you need lessons, do contact me. We're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, you know. But yeah, I just wanted to take you through some of the main characteristics and go into questions and see how you would how they would ask them and how you would answer them. But yeah, thank you so much for tuning in. Till the next video.